Regression is at the heart of statistical analysis for many analysts. It allows you to quantify the relationship between a dependent variable and one or more explanatory variables. They are also called independent variables. Classification is similar. Its goal is to use explanatory variables to predict the category of a categorical variable, which is one of the most common tasks in the increasingly important area of data mining. StatTools implements regression analysis, including multiple regression and several stepwise variations, and it implements two regression-like classification procedures, logistic regression and discriminant analysis. Regression. Regression analysis is illustrated with the data set you see here. Actually, there are two data sets, and only the top one is really necessary. It will be used to create a regression equation for amount spent, using the variables in columns C to I as explanatory variables. The bottom data set is optional. It can be used for prediction of the missing amount spent values. These two data sets have been named Customer Data and Prediction Data in the StatTools Dataset Manager. To run a multiple regression, you select Regression from the Regression and Classification dropdown, and you fill out the dialog box as shown here. You check one D variable, D for dependent, and as many I variables, I for independent, as you like. You can ask for any of the optional graphs, but keep in mind that if you check either of the unchecked boxes, you will get a lot of graphs, a separate graph for each explanatory variable. If you have a prediction data set, you can also check the option at the bottom. If you check the prediction option, you get the following warning. Depending on how your prediction data set is configured, you will probably get two other warnings about lower and upper limits on the predictions. You can click yes to all of these. The StatTools results are the standard regression results you see in all statistical packages. There is a summary section, there's an ANOVA table, and a table of regression coefficients and related information. The optional graphs allow you to check for quality of prediction and possible violations of regression assumptions. This top graph of fitted values, that is predicted values, versus actual values should be close to a 45 degree line. The graph below it of residuals versus fitted values should be a shapeless swarm of points if the regression assumptions hold. The fan shape you see here indicates non-constant variance. It suggests that the logarithm of amount spent might be a better choice as the dependent variable. If you request any of the optional graphs, you see a list of fitted values and residuals. Finally, if you have a data set for prediction and you check the prediction option, you get the prediction shown here, along with 95% prediction intervals. StatTools also lets you run several versions of stepwise regression. In this case, the Parameters section allows you to change the criteria for variables to enter or leave the equation, and there is an option toward the bottom to show detailed step results. With any of the stepwise options, the basic regression output is the same as for multiple regression, but you can also see the detailed information about the steps in building the equation. Logistic regression. Logistic regression is a popular classification technique. It is a variation of regression where the dependent variable is binary, 0 or 1.
to indicate whether an observation is in a category or not. The data you see here is used for illustration. Each of the 856 people in this sample have either tried a company's new frozen lasagna product or they haven't. And the goal is to use the data in columns C to G to classify each person as a trier or a non-trier. The triers are the ones, the non-triers are the zeros. The usual multiple regression approach isn't valid in this situation because of the binary nature of the dependent have tried variable. However, this situation is exactly what logistic regression was developed for. To run the analysis, you select logistic regression and you fill out the dialog box as shown here. Note that there are two analysis type options. The first option, the one used here, is when you have an observation, 0 or 1, on each person. The count option is when you have a count of 1s for each combination of explanatory variable values. Note that the prediction option at the bottom is like the prediction option in regression. You should check it only if you have a second data set where the values of the dependent variable are missing. The results are shown here in two parts. The top part is very much like a typical regression output. This p-value is similar to the p-value in a regression ANOVA table. It indicates whether the equation has any significant classification ability. A low p-value, as in this case, means that it does. The last column in the regression coefficients section lists the factor by which the odds of being a trier, that is a 1, change when that explanatory variable increases by one unit. For example, the odds of being a trier are about 3.7 times as large for people living alone as for people not living alone. The bottom section shows the classification results. For example, from the first row of the classification matrix, of the 495 people in the data set who have tried the product, 401 of them are correctly classified as triers. The other 94 are incorrectly classified as non-triers. Discriminant analysis. Discriminant analysis is a classical multivariate statistical technique with a long history. Its goal is essentially the same as that of logistic regression, but it does so in a slightly different way. Actually, discriminant analysis can be implemented in several different, but basically similar ways. One method is to create a linear discriminant function that separates the zeros from the ones as much as possible. Then each observation is classified as zero or one, depending on which side of the discriminant line it is on. Another method is to calculate the, quote, statistical distance from each observation to the mean vector of all zeros and to the mean vector of all ones. Then it classifies the observation according to the smaller of the two statistical distances. A third method is to allow the prior probabilities of zeros and ones and possibly different misclassification costs, and then to classify to minimize expected misclassification costs. StatTools classifies according to statistical distance, although it reports a discriminant function mostly to show which explanatory variables are most responsible for the classifications. Unlike its logistic regression implementation, it allows you to have more than two categories of the dependent variable. Finally, it lets you specify prior probabilities and misclassification costs as an option, although this is possible only when the dependent variable has two categories. To run the analysis for this same lasagna data, you select Discriminant Analysis from Regression and Classification, and you fill out the dialog box as shown here. I will include classification results, and I will use a misclassification table. This latter option brings up this dialog box. 
and I will make this type of misclassification, classifying a trier as a non-trier, twice as costly as the opposite. This takes a lot of calculations, so it takes a few seconds. Here are the results. The means in the top section are useful for understanding the two groups, the triers and non-triers. For example, the triers are considerably younger and they're about twice as likely to live alone. The discriminant function calculates a score for each person, where negative scores are more likely to be associated with triers and positive scores are more likely to be associated with non-triers. As with logistic regression, the bottom section includes a classification matrix. In this case, the specified misclassification costs indicate that it is twice as costly to misclassify a trier as a non-trier than to misclassify in the opposite direction. Therefore, the procedure misclassifies many fewer people in the second row than in the first row. Note that many complex calculations are required for these regression and classification procedures. For this reason, the StatTools results are not live. They are simply numbers. Therefore, if the data in your datasets change, you need to rerun the analyses.